Hey, this is Dr. Kelly Cagle. And for season three, we're doing things a little differently because we know that a healthy and happy dad and mom starts with a healthy and happy husband and wife. So I decided to bring along my husband, Josh, as co-host so we could share some real life stuff of the ways that we learn how to fight to make our marriage thrive. You are listening to season three of the Parenting IQ podcast, Learning to Fight. Welcome to episode 11 of the Parenting IQ podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Cagle with my husband, Josh Cagle. Well, howdy. Hello, everybody. We are so excited today to talk to you about boundaries. In fact, I asked Josh if we could talk about this after the week we had with our oldest son, who was mm -hmm. 12, and came to us with a request and to have a smartphone. We'll, we'll unpack more of this. But it's been a week for us, hadn't it? Yeah. With that, with that conversation. Yeah, well, I mean, just more in, in he's 12 years old and he'd really, I guess, started thinking about Christmas mm -hmm. and they were getting together, the brothers, the, the boys about trying to even gather a list. We hadn't even talked about Christmas. Nope. We're, we're about to get into Halloween and yep. here they are already anticipating what they're going to hope to ask for for Christmas. And so the littles were already showing us what they wanted and like dinosaurs and uh, Legos mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then Levi was the last one and then trying to start dropping hints of the, of the smartphone. And when he was catching the drift that we were probably going to say, Hey, well, we actually don't agree I asked him, that. I asked him, I said, Hey, uh, you're not going to ask for a smartphone. Are you? And he goes, mom, really? Well, yeah. That's how that I found out. And I was like, mm, okay, here we mm -hmm. go. Yeah. And so he was, super upset in in things and started calling us strict and yep. um you know really kind of breaking down we hadn't seen that in him very often mm -hmm. and and he, he had a meltdown i mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. i mean he was crying and this that and the other and and we just started realizing like wow you know what what are we doing here yeah yeah, he cried himself to sleep and, and we realized that this is something that he really wants. And do we, from our perspective, right, talking about boundaries here, from our perspective, do we meet our son who's so broken? And he, his his argument is, I'm really responsible. And he's right. He is very responsible. But he's also a 12-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. You know, and in our minds, this is not to to go against what anyone else is doing. This is, again, talking about a boundary that we have set within our household in this this topic in this area that for us it would be just like you even asked them do you want the keys to my truck mm -hmm. because well, i mean nothing is limitless i mean you have boundaries for reasons and obviously we have that gab phone mm -hmm. for him because we recognize that he does need a phone yeah right it's just the type of phone because of all the uh, unlimited access he has to things that we believe need to come through time mm -hmm. introduced to him. Yeah. And Let's talk about this Gab phone for a minute because I even went to a meeting this past week for Gab and I'm like, I'm reminded time and time again, what a blessing it is that there are companies out there that are partnering with parents yeah. that are wanting to have this as a boundary. And so the Gab phone uh, it is a phone, right? You can call, you can text but it does not have games. So that addictive portion of the game is removed from the phone. It doesn't have internet, so they can't look things up, you know, as far as porn or photos, anything like that, no internet. And then it also doesn't have social media. So the apps that it offers are very limited to uh, a, a younger usage. mind. Yeah. Phone yeah. usage, phone usage. And so we, we, we love it. We're so thankful. There's just a peace of mind that goes along with the product. And in fact, if you want to ch uh, check it out, you can use my code. It's on my website, drkellycago.com. But, um, there is a discount that you guys can get for that gap phone. There's also watches. There is the tracking device that's on that. So if that's a concern for you, knowing where your kids are at all times, but aside from that, mm -hmm. now that we, you guys know, Levi has a gap phone. He, of course, is a teenage boy, preteen, and wants a smartphone because a lot of other kids his age have a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we went back to what do we do, not in front of him, because once I heard that from him, I was like, this is not an answer I can give you right now. 
not going to tell you you're going to get it. Not going to tell you you're not going to get it. I just don't know yet. I need to talk to dad, Mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of times I think kids know which parent to ask for certain things. Who is going to say yes? There are times that dad, you are the fun one. You're the fun one in our household. So if the boys want to go and do something fun, they're going to go ask you because mom's always doing the work and mom is in charge of the chores. Mom assigns all the things and the schoolwork, you know, and I, my answer is a lot of times, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they know both of us. I mean, that's the thing about whenever we think about boundaries, whether, whether they're spoken or unspoken, our kids know us very well. They Mm -hmm. know which kids, parent to go to to get that particular topic mm-hmm. address that they want whether mm-hmm. that's in sweets hey i want to ask if we can go get some ice cream or whatever they're mm-hmm. going to ask mom or dad whichever one is normally agreeing to that or whether it's spend the night with a friend yeah. or whatever it is kids know what they well i, I would say you know they want things Mm-hmm. And so they're going to go after or to the person that they can get it or be most likely to get it from. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times what we have to make sure that we're doing is number one, helping them understand is what they're asking a good thing or a selfish thing. Mm-hmm. And inside that, why are you asking this? Mm-hmm. Are you asking this to only for yourself, mm-hmm. right? That selfish mentality Or is it something that really matters, something that the family or themselves really need? And so looking at the big picture with within this topic is this is a battle that we have often with our kids. But a lot of times that also comes back to the husband and the wife, Mm -hmm. because maybe you are not on the same page about this. And as you mentioned a little second ago, that Levi was calling us strict and he knows that I'm the strict one in our midst. He knows that, you know, and he says, mom, you're just so strict. And, and at at the same time, that can't be something that separates us. It comes in between us, all the kids desires and all their asks and all their things, because you're right. The selfishness it's in our nature. They're not bad for one. Levi's not bad for wanting a smartphone, but the culture, right? The world is saying, Hey, you know, do you, you can have this, you well, should have this. I think, what, I think what he's saying is, is, Hey, you're strict. I wonder if I identify to you that you're strict. Would you bend a little mm-hmm. bit? Right. And so it kind of goes back to the, the nation's borders. We, we, we have borders in the world, what, you know, continents, mm-hmm. uh, states, cities, even Lines, our own yeah. house, you know, everything has a boundary. And what happens is, is, I mean, we, they're, they're strict and they're set in place for reasons, Mm -hmm. stay in or out one of those two, uh, situations. And I think what he was trying to do is invade that boundary. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this, he and I about the, you know, this, this calling us uh, strict and honestly, that's fine. It helps us see a little bit from his perspective, how he can view things. But we were also able to help him understand why those boundaries are set in Mm -hmm. place. And what did we do? We reconciled and he then started to agree Mm -hmm. and came to us and apologized and this, that and the other um, and and is now okay. We had to get through that, that wave. But what in life that we have to make sure that we do as parents is is understand what our values are and how are they being portrayed to our children, like you said, are we on the same page? Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're going to go through some some curveballs that are thrown at us, maybe that we haven't even been tested right. what we think, mm-hmm. right? And I even told Levi that. I said, Levi, you've got to remember that you are, our, this is our first time to do this. Mm-hmm. You are our firstborn. And so we were walking through things that we've never done before. Mm-hmm. And with the borders that you're talking about with the state lines and, and all these things, One thing that just popped in my head is the truth that certain states have different laws from other states. Mm -hmm. So you cross the line, then, you know, some things are legal, some things are illegal in those things. And so same thing for our homes, right? That's a good point. This, these, yeah, different laws. Exactly. This is what we are living by because these are the ethicals, the moral, the biblical, most importantly right? The biblical things that we are abiding by. And we're not going to judge other homes because that's their home. 
they can set their own laws, but within our home, this is what we are living by, you right. know? And I think too, another thing is that there are visibles, visible and invisible boundaries. For example, a visible boundary is a fence. Mm-hmm. It, it clearly states it cle- oh, sorry, my series over here talking to me. Uh, a fence clearly states that, hey, this is my property. That's your property. Mm-hmm. You know, my dogs stay on this side. My kids stay on this side. It shows people to stay out. Right. You know, and another thing, too, is thinking of invisible boundaries, a knife set. If you have a two-year-old toddler, like our five-year-old Micah, he's not okay to go use a knife from our knife set. hmm You know, when he was smaller, he always wanted to help us. And we had these little plastic knives that he could use. Those are things that are appropriate for a little child to use a knife. That's but that's like a common thing that, you know, so again, with with a smartphone. Remember when Steve Jobs first created the iPad, it it was this big thing that his own kids did not have an iPad. Mm -hmm. And I told Levi that. So did you know Steve Jobs, the creator, the mind behind Apple? didn't even want his own kids using the products. Why is that? Yeah. Well, and I think as, as we prepare our kids, what are we preparing them for? We're preparing them for adulthood. Mm -hmm. And so obviously there are certain goals that you have as a family. And I really believe that inside our parenting strategies are our desires. We need to make sure that we uh, have identified those goals that our kids understand those goals. What are those goals? What do they mean? Why are they there? They're there to help establish the way that we're going again, that path Mm -hmm. that if you want to use the words boundaries, this is what we're going to live within to reach these goals, right? Mm -hmm. You can't say yes to everything in life. We have to be able to say no to certain things to get where we want to go. We can't work 46 different things or, you know, we're we're living within the boundary of 24 hours or Mm -hmm. seven days a week or whatever it might be. So as our kids uh, get older, we as parents need to make sure that we are on the same page of what we're going to stand for. Like, like when maybe our kids know that you're going to say yes, and I'm going to say no. Mm -hmm. Right. Have we, can we first make sure that we say, Hey, let us get together first so that they don't think it's mom or dad being the negative or the one saying no. If this one. is who we are as a family mm-hmm. or our parents, we're saying, hey, you can go spend the night with this person. Mm-hmm. Or we're saying you can't go spend the night with this person. Mm-hmm. It's not because mom said no or because dad said yes or whatever that those things are. We're, we're in agreement. Yeah. Right. That's a big, big thing. The other day I asked a soccer buddy, I actually asked the the dad and I don't even know that I told you this, but I, behind the scenes, I didn't want to Levi to really know what was going on or even the other boy to know, but I asked him, I said, Hey, I want you to ask your wife because I know that this is, you know, sleepover is different. Ask her what she thinks about him coming home with us after training. And then we bring him back for soccer and all these things. Then the the mom ended up calling me and she's like, Hey, um, I just really want to unpack this a little bit. And and gave me this this reason that was so wonderfully put. That was something that I knew because she called me two days later. I know that mom and dad got together. Mom and dad discussed, she said, We really want our son to play with yours because we really value their friendship. But this is just something that we're standing by because of the club, like there was this bigger picture. There was this bigger reason for the no. It wasn't because of our family. Like we don't trust your family. It was because there is a deeper reason that we are standing by that we are telling like the the club, you know, the soccer club, we're not doing this right now. We don't feel comfortable with this right now. And I was just like, 100% respect that Mm -hmm. because what happened? They got on the same page. They discussed. They said, man, we really want this friendship to to be a thing, but a sleepover is too far. And mm-hmm. we have the limitation of where we live that's far. And I explained that to her. That was the only reason why I even asked for a sleepover. But she said, we will meet halfway. We will definitely drive out. And so, but the beauty behind that was for me, he is their oldest son. They've got daughters, but he's the oldest son. And the my, the conversation that I know took place 
between that husband and wife to get on the same page. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to say with these core things, with these really important, deep rooted things, what can happen in a sleepover for boys or even girls Mm -hmm. a whole lot. Right. And so they were looking at the big picture of the long-term effect of this. Yes. Or of this. No. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, it's just like what they're saying is, is if they say yes to us, then the opportunities have to say yes to others. Right. And same thing with this smartphone that we were sharing mm-hmm. with, with Levi. If we say yes to this, now we're having to analyze all the games. Mm-hmm. Now we're having to analyze all these other activities that come with this phone and you spend more time having to monitor. Mm-hmm. And just because you're responsible for a short or for a certain season doesn't mean you're always responsible right yeah. there can come moments that that hit you like a ton of bricks and you're back to square zero and and i think i think we've got to make sure that as we look at our goals for raising our children we need to understand that our responsibilities are large think of it like a like a hundred yards um that that our responsibility is this whole football field right and on that football field, we're responsible for everything that's taking place as we're raising these kids, right? Mm-hmm. We're trying to go from this end zone to that end zone. But what's so funny is, is that as we reach the end of this particular end zone, then they take over that whole field, if you will. We become the spectator. We become the fan in the seat. And they're playing on this field all by themselves. Their responsibility, yeah. it the roles reverse, right, mm-hmm. at, up at a certain age. Um, the roles reverse and they become the biggest uh, chooser of their decisions and, and their choices become the most powerful and, and all those things. Mm-hmm. But yet they're still on this same field. Yeah, It's just mom and dad. We're not maybe the, the coaches anymore on that field. We're, we're now a fan in the field mm-hmm. or, or in the stadium, right? If that makes sense. And I think what we're trying to do, though, is, is, is help them understand the game understand this game of life that we're all on this journey in. And not that mom and dad are perfect, Mm -hmm. not that we've got the game of life all figured out, but yet when we know that we are all centered, we're here for this time in life. There's no other family. There's no other family group that you have as parents, no other kids, maybe, (laughs) unless you're going to have some more kids, but there's no other kids aside from yours right now. And to make the biggest influence in their life is, is such an honor a privilege, but it also requires a lot of uh, mental capacity. Yeah. The intentionality. intentionality. Yeah. So let's unpack a little bit how to establish uh, healthy boundaries. And I think two big things to establish healthy boundaries are the first one is to think of maturity. So you can do some research. Don't just say yes on a whim. For example, as you mentioned, Levi had that meltdown uh, there were tugs in my heart, you know, that were just kind of like, oh, maybe he could, whatever. But based it on maturity, he is a 12 year old boy. And once you hand him that phone, it's what I told him, Levi, we drive for other people. We don't drive for ourselves, right? We're defensive drivers. So you have a phone and although you are uh, responsible and mature, it doesn't mean that your friends are responsible and mature and they're not going to be sending you things. So Thinking about maturity, and then the second one I think is really important to think about is base it on culture. What is what is going on in the world? What what is col- the cultural influence? So thinking of establishing healthy boundaries, thinking of those two areas, maturity, because every kid is different. Because he asks all the time, "Well, what, when can I get a smartphone?" I can't give you that answer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know. There could be that a new product comes out. It could be that something else happens. You know, the I can't give you that. Uh, But then also the cultural influence. What is the world really trying to suck them into? Trying to say. Yeah. Well, and I think as a parent, as uh, in in that aspect of culture, um, we all want our kids to enjoy life. We all want them to have everything that, that, that makes sense. You know, we, we don't want to them to feel like that they're doing without. Okay. But I do think it's, it goes back to, uh, when you talk about maturity, not, not just because you're 16 
and the world says you can drive, mm-hmm. well, based on what maybe we see at 16, if you can't drive, buddy, you're not driving. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maturity does come at different moments. And on the flip side, we're not going to go give you the keys to our car when you're 12 years old. That's mm-hmm. not mature or wise either. And so I think whenever we're looking at life as a family, what we want all of us to make sure that we're grasping hold of is, is, is that we, we want our kids to understand that, that our, what our family values are, that yeah. we, we want them to win, right? And life is so colorful. It's so fluid. We could be headed in this particular direction and all of a sudden we got to pivot and go a different direction because of a scenario. Um, and, and we need to make sure that the, that the home, that the establishment in this home is very, very solid that our kids understand when you talk about culture, that the culture of our home, that certain boundaries are when you come in here, that we're not going to have strife. We're not going to have a a lot of anxiety. We're not, we're not going to have a lot of bickering Mm -hmm. and frustration. Mm -hmm. This is a place of peace. It's a place of rest. It's a safe haven. You know, we're going to reestablish a connection to love and what love even means and Mm -hmm. is and even whenever we screw it up inside the home, because mm-hmm. it can get screwed up, we're going to reconcile. We're going to repent. We're going to we're going to come to uh, a, a new healthy place yeah. with our relationships. Because inside this home, parents that that we are here to establish, our biggest goal is not to be their friend, mm-hmm. but it's to lead them to who God is and the way in which He has for their life. And I don't know how many of you guys ever think that. God's just not our, our goody, goody, you know, give us everything that we sugar want, daddy. Uh, sugar daddy type of person. You know, sometimes we, we have to learn what no's mean, mm-hmm. even as adults, you know, you're very good at establishing that no boundary when it comes to, you know, time or certain things that, you know, might rob you from some of your goals that mm-hmm. you have, even in this business that you're, that you're walking out Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And, and it can seem like, man, that you, that the ramifications are, you don't get to have some fun, but at the end of the day, I mean, your heart is geared towards trying to pour out to parents and, and walk alongside them while we're a parent, you know, while we're in this stage, we don't want to forget this stuff. Not And again, we say it all the time, not that we got it figured out, we're honored just to be able to be here mm-hmm. and, and share different topics and kind of expose our lives and ask for, for people to reach out and say, hey, what do you want to hear? And when we hear those things, we think about them, you know, in our time, we try to unpack them mm-hmm. and, then, and then kind of relay to you guys things that go on in, in our life. Yeah. And maybe that can be some sort of a tool that you could use in your own home. Mm-hmm. That's our biggest heart. And I think in this world, when you got so many things coming at us, that shield that we need or that hedge of protect, p- protection, protection yeah. that the Bible talks about is really just that that boundary. Yeah. I want you to live within this. That's right. You That's know? right. Yeah. And I, the biggest thing to me is when it comes to boundaries is that boundaries are meant to protect, not limit. Mm-hmm. Boundaries should be a protection, not a limit. And that's good. When the kids going back to what we are dealing with, because this was a this was really heavy. This was really a lot for us this this past week that we dealt with Levi, you know, and and to to think of where we need because this is for our first time doing this. And so we are not limiting him. This is what I helped him see that Levi, you don't need to focus on what you don't have because you have a lot. Like all of the things that, for example, we're homeschooling this year because of the sake of time, because of his soccer, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think perspective and helping them see, we forget, you and I forget, I'm not saying we, including you guys audience, but you're probably just like us, but Josh, you and I forget all the time that they are kids that need to be taught. We tell each other all the time, man, he's just 12 and we expect him to to understand, to not focus on the nose and to not, you know, whatever. But then whenever we stop and we take a deep breath and we remind ourselves that, hey, we're setting this boundary to protect him, not to limit him because we do say yes to a whole, whole lot, buddy. 
but we're just trying to protect you because we have been there. We have lived in your shoes before, like at your age in those circumstances, and we're just protecting you. Mm -hmm. And so helping them see that is, we say it all the time, that teaching moments, the whys are so important. Helping them see why, not just, no, because you're 12. That told them nothing. Right. You can't sleep over there because no. Well, that told them nothing. Mm -hmm. But whenever you actually, you mentioned the second ago, but the, the, men the mental, the intentionality that you sit down and you think, but here's why we don't want you to do this. Mm -hmm. This is what happened when I was your age and I was at a sleepover. This is what just was sent to my phone from a friend, whatever. You know what I mean? And you use those opportunities as teaching moments, the lifelong learning that goes on behind the scenes, helping to see the big picture. You know, taking the time to really unpack the real life and get them beyond their their little world. Mm -hmm. You know what they what they see, what they think they need, whatever. Well, I think you're really good whenever you use the word teaching. Sometimes I expect, you know, that they should just know this or that mm -hmm. or whatever. And and sometimes to me, I kind of think about that common sense. You know, my dad always <laughs> talks so much about common sense and. And um, I think it was more when he was talking about it, about how many times I didn't show common sense, yeah. you know, but now as you're a little older and, and, and you've had to go through some school of hard knocks and stuff, <laughs> you start realizing, man, um, but, but inside all this, uh, that, that, that time to teach our kids are so uh, desperate for sponges. Our, They're sponges. Yeah. Our influence, whether we know it or not, whether, mm -hmm. and, and maybe sometimes I think, it could even be that we, especially the older they get, that we might feel like we've screwed up on some stuff, mm -hmm. some things, and we don't know how to maybe go back to go forward. And that's why that what I was sharing earlier, that reconciliation of the mm -hmm. home is so key. So fathers, if you've made any mistakes with your children, um, I think it's very important for them to understand wh where you uh, have messed up you know, why you have messed up and what you're going to do moving forward now that you have portrayed to them, hey, I'm sorry, or, you know, I will not do that or whatever. I, I won't say that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think as a father, we need to make sure that we show that gentleness, that kindness uh, and, and that, that humility yeah, that good. whenever we are willing to humble ourselves for yeah, maybe maybe they deserved it. Maybe maybe we you know ha were validated uh, in how we decided to correct someone or or to uh, attack them verbally. But yet it might have not been the the thing that really taught them. Yeah, it scarred them. Mm, that's good. you know, yeah. and, and I think we've got to make sure that as as a father, what are we doing? You're raising future fathers. Yeah, future husbands. And you're showing them what those boundaries look like as a man. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah, because essentially we are two different people. Mm -hmm. I have the role of a mom. You have the role of a dad. We don't have daughters, but I am also showing our sons what a healthy wife can look like, what mm -hmm. a healthy mom can look like. And not that setting expectations for them for their future wives, but really just showing them, hey, you can have you know, standards mm -hmm. and that, that are, that are appropriate and things that are not appropriate. And so the different roles that, that we play in our house are really important, but then essentially we're still on the same team. And so when it comes to these, these ethicals, moral, biblical beliefs that the world is really trying to influence the kids. So make sure that you mom and dad get on the same page on these beliefs that you really want to hold on to and keep revisiting them, yeah. you know, as they keep coming up, as the kids keep getting older, as the conversations, the requests, the world, the school, the things that they're hearing, as those things keep coming up, keep revisiting, keep having these conversations. Don't stop talking about this, the, the big issues, because the world is emphasizing a lot of different things, but you parent, you mom, you dad, really have to remain the loudest voice of influence in your kid's life so you can continue to teach them in daily moments. We love you guys. See you next week.